All right, this is video three today. A lot of stuff is going on in the world. A lot of stuff is going on in the world. Right now, they're hammering. Hammering in the Middle East for a two-state two solution and all that crap. All that's going to do is it's going to piss God off. All right? It's going to tick him off. But we already know what's going to happen because it was all put down in the Holy Bible. What's going to happen in the end. And uh, the, the first thing for Christians to know of note is that a revolt has to come first. My Bible is older, older than the King James Version. And since King James didn't say change that word, it says revolt. It doesn't say falling away or whatever the King James says. I've got a King James, you know. But the thing is, is I want to try to get the most accurate that I can, right? So, be, it, you know a king is going to meddle. A king is going to meddle in a translation. Okay? I mean, look at... Look, I hate to say this. I got... I got a lot of buddies over there in England, Wales, and Scotland, right, and Ireland as well, but in Northern Ireland, because I know that the Southern Ireland, Northern Ireland, they want to make that distinction. So I'm gonna say I got buddies in all those places, right? And we look at we look at Christianity. And we look at we look at uh, the British Isles, right? The UK, Ireland, and, and so on. We look at that. And we say, well, it's not strong there. Christianity is not real strong there, like it used to be a very long time ago. Um, now you got like. Uh, Chuck is the head of the church, you know. No. <laughs> it's sorry, Chuck. You're not the head of anything. You're just a clown. So, anyway. Who's the head of the church? Jesus Christ is the head of the church. That's who's the head of the church. You know, we talk about the Anglican church over there and everything. There's a lot of, there's a lot of problems in churches everywhere, though, now. I mean, it's really even gotten really bad in the United States. You know what? I don't even go to any churches because you cannot find a church that doesn't have a bunch of woke crap, leftist, satanic influenced stuff. You don't you can't find a church. So the best thing that you could do is rely on the Holy Bible and the Holy Spirit, right? So the Holy Spirit interprets the Holy Bible for any God fearing Christian, right? That's how it works. A lot of people say, well, I can't look at the Bible because I read it and it's just a bunch of stuff and I don't understand it. It's because you're not a Christian, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You gotta be you gotta be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Get baptized. You need to be baptized. You need to get that Holy Spirit. You need to get that fire in you from God. So you, you could read the Bible, you say, Holy Spirit, I need to know this. Please show me in the in God's word what I need to know. Show me. That's how that works. There isn't that you know. And then the Catholics. <laughs> See, the thing is, I've been a Catholic and I've been a Protestant. Both. I've been both sides of the fence, and I decided after a lot of years that the real truth is in the middle. They do have some stuff on both sides, you know I mean, but they bo both made errors, right? But if you got, if you hold it to the Bible, the Bible is the test subject. That's that is that is the crucible, okay? Does it stack up against what the Bible says? Doesn't matter which side. Does it stack up to what the Holy Bible says? If it doesn't, then it ain't true, okay? Has to, it has to say do, it has to align with the scripture. 
If it doesn't, it's a false doctrine. All right. I know some of you guys don't like me preaching on here, but you know what? I got to get you guys ready. I have to. It's my duty to get you guys ready. First of all, I got to get you ready physically, and I got to get you ready secondly, spiritually. Because those two things go together. Those two things go together. Okay? They go together. Uh, there's a lot of things that I could talk about from the Bible on this channel. You know, a lot of things I could talk about. Um, in, 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 uh, some will say, well... I don't believe this, or I don't believe that, or I don't understand this, or I don't understand that about the Bible, right? For instance, some people say, well, the Catholics preach on purgatory all the time, and blah, 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 and, and the Protestants say there is, there, 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 is, there is no such thing as purgatory, blah, 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 but the thing is, is that the Protestant Bible has books removed, which is... Actually, that is actually warned about in the Bible itself. Do not remove any books. So Martin Luther was a Catholic priest originally, and then he broke off, and it was the Protestant Reformation and all that, and he took books out of the Bible. There's 66 in the, 66 in the Protestant and 72 in the Catholic or 73, it might, if, 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 depends on how you, you work out the chapters, right? So anyway, the, 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 what is called purgatory, some say Abraham's bosom, and, and, and all of that, when you talk about, when you read about the rich man, uh, in Lazarus, right, and uh, Lazarus is hanging out in Abraham's bosom, and then the the other guy, he's he's smoking, you know, he's like, man, I'm hot, you know, dip your finger in some water and give it to me. But there's like this chasm between them, right? That's that's described as a chasm between between uh, Lazarus and the the rich guy after they're gone from the earth, right? And then purgatory is, is actually mentioned in uh, Malachi, I think it's, I think it's Mal, book of Malachi 2, verse 42 or something like that. Purgatory is, is spoken of there. But here's the thing. When Jesus went to the crucifixion, and then they took his body down and they put it in the tomb. He, that body was in that tomb for three days. And what happened? Jesus went with the keys because he has the kingdom in his hands, right? He went down. Everybody says, well, what happened to all of those biblical men and women of the Old Testament before Jesus came back? What happened to them? Well, they were held in this place. They were held in this place. They were not clean enough to be with the Father in his heavenly house, because Jesus had not come yet. So this this concept of purgatory or Abraham's bosom and so on is that this is was a holding place. It doesn't exist anymore. Okay, it does not exist anymore for Christians. So because Jesus came, Jesus paid the price for all sin. And you have to be spotless when you walk through the Father's door. Okay, you've got to be spotless. So Jesus cleanses all sin. So you are spotless. Absolutely not a speck on you when you walk through the Father's door into his house. Okay, so during those three days, Jesus went to get everybody from the Old Testament days, before he came, including David, Solomon, Abraham, all of them, 
And he said, here I am, and I'm going to cleanse you, and I'm going to forgive you, and you are coming home to the Father's house with me. I'm going to take you there. So that whole purgatory thing is empty. It's empty. Why? Because Christians, and this is where the Catholics get it wrong, purgatory does not exist anymore. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, purgatory does not exist for you anymore because you will be cleansed by Jesus before you go into the Father's house because we have Jesus. So, Jesus went It took all them home. He took them all home. No more purgatory. Then he come back after three days. And then that's when he got with, you know, all the disciples, he said, hang, you know, hang tight. I'm going to teach you for a while. And then, you know, I'm going to be leaving. Holy Spirit's going to be coming upon you, you know, and you'll have the Holy Spirit with you while you're here the rest of the time on the earth, right? This is the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. So, the Catholics get a few things wrong. The Protestants get a few things wrong. you got to be able to discern. It's the spirit of discernment that the Holy Spirit puts upon you. you got to be able to discern right and wrong. You know, oh, you know what? That doesn't line up with the Scripture. It's wrong. And actually, the Protestants say solo Scripture scripturus or whatever it is, right? I can't can't remember what it is. It's in Latin. But it means only the word of God, the Bible. But the problem is is that they didn't read in the very back chapter of the Bible about taking books out of the Bible because 66 books versus 72 books. Okay? Martin Luther said, well, I don't think that one really belongs. I'm taking that out, you know. So, if you're smart, you go get yourself one with 72 books in it and, you know, read a little more. <laughs> 66, 66 uh, to 70, that's four, and then two more, so that's six. Six books that were taken out. So, it's got 66 books. Let's, this is an interesting thing that I saw. So the Protestant Bible has 66 books in it, and six were removed. 666. Why were those six removed by Martin Luther? I don't know. I'm not saying, I'm not going Protestant Catholic here. I'm not. Because like I said, they both got stuff wrong. But you've got to be able to discern what's right and what's wrong. And the way you discern that is through the Holy Spirit... In the Bible. But you got to have a full Bible. <laughs> to get all the information right. You can't like have. Have a book that only has part of the instructions. Okay. Because it ain't going to work that way. I only got a minute left. So at the end here. I wanted to talk about this sustainment pouch. So. You can. Put your survival kit in a sustainment pouch there. And then. Put it in a drop leg, right? This is a drop leg. This is a drop leg that I've been making, okay? Because uh, I wanted it a certain length or whatever. So, this would be a survival pouch on a drop leg. It's more crap, but it's just an option. And then you get into certain situations. Uh, you get into certain situations, is you, you dress for the mission. Whatever the mission is, that dictates what you're using, right? So you got to have options. I know I spent most of this video preaching, but some people need to need to listen to that word. I'll see you later.